well. The only difference <laughs> is there's Galarian Moltres and Grim Snarl on Leonardo's side compared to that G Max Blastoise and Clefairy on Leonard's end. So thinking back to the regional finals phase of this tournament, we saw that Clefairy do some amazing work for Leonard's team using the friend guard ability to ensure that the Reggie Steel, the Reggie Alecki, the Landorus just had that extra bulk they needed in order to take those hard hits. What I find super interesting about Leonardo's team is that he does have that same utility present. He does have the ability to increase the bulk on his side of the field, but uh, rather than doing so via Clefairy, who is a Pokemon, you can switch in and out. You can, you know, sort of pick when the friend guard ability is active versus when it's not present. Uh, Grimmsnarl, you just send out right away usually and go straight for the light screen or the reflect. Uh, and those two buffs will persist for eight turns, knowing that Grimmsnarl is holding that light clay item. Uh, and during those eight turns, you know, you do have the benefit of them. So it's gonna introduce a bit of a different play style, I think right off the bat for these two trainers, despite the fact that their teams are very similar, you know, on paper and very, sim very similar in terms of function. Uh, the other difference I wanna call out before we jump into this match is the adaptation Leonard brought in. You know, leaving behind the Galarian Moltres we saw in regional finals, instead bringing the G-Max Blastoise onto the field. And I am very excited to see this. We saw many players going from Players Cup 2, Players Cup 3 into Players Cup 4 leave the Galarian Moltres behind. It doesn't have the best matchup against Regieleki. It suffers against Pokemon like Togekiss, who can use those super effective fairy type attacks. Uh, but the adaptation to a Blastoise on Leonard's team was something I wasn't really expecting to see from him. And I am curious if he's adapting to Blastoise because he felt like he needed that water type attack, firepower, water power, however you want to phrase that. Uh, or if he's going to be relying more or on GMAX Cannonade's secondary effect, which will deal damage in between turns, similar to GMAX Colossal, similar to GMAX Charizard and Venusaur as well. So I cannot wait to see if we're going to get that Blastoise featured in this game coming up. Um, I hope we will, uh, but still just interesting things to keep in mind as we do go into team preview, since otherwise, you know, the teams do look very similar. Yeah, and there is a lot of similarities, meaning both players really understand the the way that these teams operate and their win conditions. We saw firsthand Gabby on Leonard's end in the region finals, how strong Dynamax Landorus is. Of course, Leonardo has that as well. And Moltres, Galarian Moltres, I should say, has a worse matchup against Landorus, certainly than Blastoise would, right? Being oh, able to definitely. hit it super super effectively. So that I understand and I, you know, I like the pivot on liver on on Leonard's end, excuse me, to go to the have another strong Gigantamax attacker on his team in Blastoise. But that's enough out of you and me, Gabby. It's time to get into game one. We have all the time in the world to talk about how exciting G-Max, <laughs> the G-Max Blastoise can be, but this is winner's quarters here in global finals between Leonard Kraft and Leonardo Bonanomi. Leonardo has the Spectriere Regielecki lead on his end, and then Lander Sterian and Regielecki for Leonard. Already we're seeing these two Regieleki face off in battle, and I like how Leonard and Leonardo made sure to lead these two Pokemon. The really interesting thing to me about seeing two Regieleki face off against each other is that, you know, a lot of times they're trained in very similar ways, and this would be an interesting opportunity to see how those two would play off against each other, but some adjustments right off the bat already for Leonardo. Landorus switching in for Leonardo into that Reggie Alecki slot. So if Leonard went for an Earthquake or some Clefairy will be next to it. Electroweb from Leonard is going to lower the speed on Spectriere's uh, side. Not gonna hit Landorus obviously since it is a ground type. And Will-O-Wisp from Spectriere into Clefairy. Obviously Clefairy's not going to care about that uh, as much as the Landorus would. So a very safe turn out of Leonard here on, on turn one. Uh, it's able to prevent his landers from getting will wisp And that is an important thing already in this matchup. A lot of trainers going into Players Cup 4 have started using Spectriere to be a very fast Will-O-Wisp user. And even though Will-O-Wisp isn't the most 
accurate move out there. Being able to have your opponent's attacking power is very important, especially when Landorus and Regieleki are really the two key Pokemon that Leonard brought to attack in this battle. Thunderbolt knocking out Spectrier here, so no other utility provided in game one besides that one burn onto Clefairy. Sword Stance from Landorus will boost its attack by two Aww. stages, and Sing misses. <laughs> it is a 55% accurate move, so of course, you're not going to hit the Sing every time, contrary to what we saw in the region finals out of Leonard's Clefairy here. <laughs> uh, I like the Swords Dance turn there. Uh, one, you could be expecting potentially Reggie Lucky to switch out into Landorus, right? So it would be immune to the ground attack. But also that Swords Dance is kind of preemptively negating the future Intimidates coming from the, uh, the Landorus later on. Also giving Leonardo's Lander is the perfect opportunity to go for Dynamax this turn if he chooses to. I think that with the Clefairy and the Regieleki on the field, you might want to wait a turn just so that if there is the Landorus switch in, you don't necessarily get caught and waste one of your Dynamax turns attacking into a Pokemon with like a Max Quake or what have you. Um, and you have to be very careful uh, as well considering that the Clef Clefairy could redirect, it could go for a second sing. Uh, so I think Leonardo is like laying the groundwork for how he wants to play this end game. He wants to get the Landorus up as high as an attack as possible, you know, use it to threaten the Pokemon that Leonard has revealed on his side of the field, and then maybe even get its attack boosted up so that when it does come down to Landorus versus Landorus, his Landorus will be able to knock Leonard's Landorus out in fewer hits. It's a very safe approach to this game one, given again, we've seen so many similarities between these two trainers, both in their teams and in how they're approaching this game. A Spectrier switching to the Regieleki slot, so Leonardo is going to Dynamax his Landorus on this turn. So I was actually wondering what Leonard's switch was here because Reggie Lucky's in a tough spot. Does it want to get a lot of damage off onto Galarian Moltres, but at that point would be knocking itself out from this Max Quake? Or do you make a pivot like Leonard did here and bring in the Spectrier potentially for free if it doesn't get attacked? Galarian Moltres protecting as well, so I think Leonard wasn't even expecting the Reggie Lucky to switch out. Cl Clefairy protects as well, and the Max Airstream, the much safer option into Clefairy, and that is plus two attack Max Airstream through Protect. Clefairy, we know to be a considerably bulky Pokemon, uh, so the fact that it took that much damage shows just how strong this Landorus' attack is at this point. Now you have two Pokemon on the field here on Leonard's end. The Spectriere uh, is more supportive with will wisp and Snarl, things like that. Clefairy can really only follow me or Helping Hand or something like that, so not a lot of offensive pressure this turn out of Leonard. No, but Leonard's switching in that Spectriere for free and Clefairy's being able to take that Max Airstream means that Leonard will have one opportunity to match the burn on the Clefairy to the Landorus. If this Will-O-Wisp hits, that Sword Stance is no longer going to be in play and it gives Leonard a much easier end game. Max Airstream does knock out Clefairy, so Leonard is down to his final two uh, or excuse me, it, it knocks out the Clefairy, so he's going to have to switch in the Landorus or Regilecki back in next turn. But because of the two max Airstream boosts, Galarian Moltres is now faster than Spectre Air, so that is a free nasty plot on Galarian, Mol Galarian Moltres. Connects. And will does connect onto Landorus, though, so uh, not as harmful as it would have been if he was not able to get the Sword Stance up earlier. Obviously still impacts it, well because that's that's the willowist job is to burn the landorus and hurt its attack stat uh, but because of the swords dance it's not going to feel it too badly and you have this one last turn of dynamax to go for either a third max airstream or potential max quake or you know whatever whatever leonardo is feeling because he's in a pretty strong spot he is, and I really like how he forewent the attack on Moltres that turn for the Nasty Plot. It's true that a Fiery Wrath would have done a significant amount of damage to the Spectriere and possibly knocked it out in one hit, depending on how it's trained. But by going for the Nasty Plot here, it's almost like Leonardo gave himself another out. 
you know, yes, the Landorus is burned. Yes, I won't get as much utility out of that sword stance. But now I have this Moltres who honestly is just as scary, is just as fast. And, you know, with Fiery Wrath, that is a perfectly accurate, 100% accurate move that also carries with it the chance of flinching. So Leonardo just playing very safe and taking the opportunity to accept that he probably would have gotten burned that turn to set Moltres up so it can also go on the offensive. And now Leonard has to find a way to get the speed control back on his side of the field. Otherwise, this Moltres and this Landorus on Leonardo's side just have to keep attacking and they should be able to find those knockouts very easily. With a nasty pot, plot boost, this Galarian Moltres can be very strong. Obviously, you can't flinch the Landorus, but would probably knock out the Spectre Air, potentially even flinch the Regieleki. And we know that Landorus and Galarian Moltres, <laughs> they know a thing or two about flinching the, uh, the opposing Pokemon. So Just a bit. Max Airstream into the Max Guard on Leonard's end. And the, so Leonard is going to stay safe on his Landorus this turn. But then, of course, that Fiery, chan fiery Wrath the Spectre never stood a chance against that. That is a clean one-hit knockout there. So now Leonard is down to his Regielecki and Landorus against Leonardo's team here. You think with two speed boosts, you would imagine, right, that the Landorus is faster potentially than Regielecki at this point? I know it's an extremely fast Pokemon, but uh, depending on how these Regieleckis are trained, sometimes you don't always fully invest in speed because it's so fast already, you're gonna outspeed things. Maybe it's already faster and you can cleanly click Earthquake Earthquake because you're next to a flying type. That probably <laughs> is going to be Leonardo's play going into this turn. You, yes, you are most likely faster and yes, you don't have to worry about hurting the Moltres. I think Leonard's in a position where he has to protect this Regieleki, go for Max Airstream, probably target down the Moltres, honestly. I think you might do a little more damage uh, to the Moltres compared to the Landorus in this situation. Get that plus one speed boost and then hope that Regieleki at plus one speed can outspeed Moltres. Because uh, otherwise, you're going to be in a very tough spot and again Leonard, Leonardo just has to keep the pressure on in order to win this game one no Whoa. switch from Leonardo because he wants the sword stance again negating that uh, intimidate that came in after with Landorus and of That's course the burn so fiery wrath from Moltres will connect on to the Landorus there and do a decent amount of damage Reggie Lucky being forced to protect essentially on that turn. And Max Airstream with a one hit KO in two Moltres. So now Leonard's two Pokemon <coughs> have a speed boost. And you can think Reggie Lucky's back in the game is the fastest Pokemon in the format. And it just got a speed boost as well. Yes. But the Landorus on Leonardo's side of the field is still going to be faster. And unlike Leonard's Regieleki, Leonardo's Regieleki is free to go to for protect this turn so that Leonardo's Landorus can go for that earthquake to target Leonard's Regieleki. I know it's all a little bit confusing, yeah. but uh, <laughs> just remember that there is one Regieleki that can protect and there's one Regieleki that can't protect. And that really dictates how the flow of this turn is going to be. This is also Leonard's last turn of Dynamax. And I think that he is almost forced to go for a second max airstream here, just so that he does have the opportunity to outspeed the opposing Landorus because at plus four attack, even when burned, that Landorus is going to be doing a huge amount of damage with whatever attack he tries to go for. Maybe it's going to be the fly, maybe it's going to be the rock slide, you know, maybe that earthquake for Regieleki, of course, but it, it's still something that, that you have to be very, very careful about. Thunderbolt from one Regieleki into the other, not enough for a knockout, but just shows how strong it is because it does that much to it. And Leonardo with Fly, a two turn move, obviously not having Dynamax anymore. So it's gonna take all two turns to hit there. And the Max Airstream Aww. goes into the Fly. So Leonard actually missing his third and final turn of Dynamax and that's crucial for Leonardo because he just dodged all of that damage. Leonardo will have to take damage on Landorus's return to Earth, so to speak. So that is something that's working in Leonard's favor. And uh, if L Leonard can find maybe a rock slide to connect with that Landorus and then go for a fly or something, I think that he still is going to be in a winning position. But the interesting thing to me is that these Regieleki, uh, they, they can't hurt the opposing Landorus, right? So it's almost like we have Landorus versus Landorus and Regieleki versus Regieleki on the field. 
<laughs> yeah, it's definitely like, you know, oh, don't worry, I'll take care of this guy, and then you Aww. take care of the other one. So Fly <laughs> does connect onto Leonard's Landorus, knocking it out there, so it's two to one at this point. The Reggie Lucky physically cannot touch Landorus, so you would assume, uh, even though Leonard tried his best to try to find himself in a position with the max, you know, airstream and protect, getting the speed back in his, his favor, potentially, uh, it just isn't enough because when you only have electric attacks against the ground type, it's not going to work out. No, and that's something to keep in mind as we go into game two. It looks like Reggie Alecki is going to take one more knockout at least, you know, just to bring you that morale well. with it into game two. Uh, but it, this game is really about speed. It's about these two Landorus and these two Reggie Alecki, and I, I can't wait to see the adaptations as Landorus is able to use that earthquake finally to secure the knockout and uh, give Leonardo the win this game one. The double swords dance out of Leonardo in game one is what ultimately ends up, you know, winning it for him. And now he has this big advantage in winner's quarters. One went away from moving on. Uh, but uh, we saw multiple best of three sets out of Leonard in the region finals. And he was able to come back and pull it off. Maybe there's an adjustment you can make with Blastoise as it's a pretty strong special attacker into Landers doesn't care about Intimidate 1 and 2, hit it super effectively with GMAX Cannonade, but Reggie Lucky, it kind of exists as like the ultimate anti-Blastoise Pokemon, right? So if, yeah. if Leonardo leads Reggie Lucky, I don't know if Leonard can even bring Blastoise. I, I don't think Leonard can. As much as I would love to see Blastoise take the field, I feel like this is a classic rival situation where uh, Leonard picked Blastoise and Leonardo picked Reggie Alecki. You know, <laughs> your, your three starter choices, Bidoof, Blastoise, and Reggie Alecki. Um, <laughs> so I, I don't think this is quite the game for Blastoise. What I do think it is, though, is a game of Max Airstreams. We saw Leonardo not only go for those two sword stands but also those max air streams and I think those max air streams on his side of the field just really opened the board state up you know getting that first Dynamax getting those max air streams up when Leonard was on a bit of a back foot you know having that Clefairy and Spectriere on the field and going into game two while I don't think we're going to see any Pokemon adjustments not yet maybe game three um, I think what we are going to see is a higher importance of Dynamax on Leonard and Leonardo's side of the field, possibly even a turn one Dynamax, because you need to get those airstreams up. You need to position your Regieleki and your Landorus so that they're going to be faster than the opposing Regieleki and Landorus. And then you use your Pokemon like the Spectriere, like the Clefairy, to just ensure that there's enough pressure on the field so that you can make navigating to your winning board state a little bit easier. Uh, it's such a close matchup, and it, it almost feels like a mirror match, you know, Joe? I mean, both these trainers are relying on virtually the same Pokemon at the end of the day, and it, it's really exciting to see the different thought processes as they work their way through the board. No, absolutely. I mean, the only difference in that match, in game one at least, was Clefairy on Leonard's end and Galarian Moltres on Leonardo's, right? So exactly. there's definitely some similar play styles in Pokemon on each of their things, and I'm just... I'm just thinking about, um, I'm caught up on the region where Professor Oak has Reggie Lecky, Blastoise, and Bidoof, and the kid who wakes up late and gets to Professor Oak's lab and gets, uh, some would say stuck with Bidoof, you would say honored Excuse to be with, with Bidoof at that point. Uh, but let's uh, <laughs> let's save our friendship and let's move on to game two here between <laughs> Leonard and Leonardo as quickly as possible so Gabby doesn't get mad at me. Reggie Lecky and Spectriere <laughs> is the lead yet again out of Leonardo. So uh, the has access to the fast will wisp like oh, and there is it. the adjustment. Leonard saying, "Hey, I might as well. I'm down a game here in this matchup. I need to make an adjustment because it didn't work out for me last last game." So you see the Blastoise. It is really not in too safe a position against this uh, this Reggie Lucky, and it's not like the Spectriere on Leonard, or excuse me, the Reggie Lucky on the other side can do anything about it because it's just going to be a resisted Thunderbolt. It is, but there is Electroweb, which will make the Reggie Alecki on Leonardo's side of the field one stage slower, and maybe that's enough to have Blastoise outspeed. Well, you, can, you can certainly hope, but a Snarl from the Spectriere as well is going to lower the special attack of Reggie Alecki. Not Blastoise because it protected, but this is pretty much like the anti-Blastoise lead we were talking about. A yeah. Snarl and an Electric type 
to hurt its special attack and hit it super effectively. That's really uh, putting Leonard in a difficult position. You wonder, does he have Landorus in the back as a as a security potentially in case he's not able to effectively utilize Blastoise here? And if you switch yeah. into a Thunderbolt right now, then you essentially have a free switch. You're not expecting a Will-O-Wisp into Blastoise since it's a special attacker. So maybe the exactly. as we see Landorus and Clefairy are the two in the back. Yeah, and I really like that you brought that up, Joe, as we see these trainers uh, switch things around just a little bit. I think the Blastoise was essentially bait. Like, it's like, show me what you brought to stop my Landorus, and I will send out Blastoise later to deal with it. Um, Spectre actually dodging the second Electro Web there, so only going to have its speed lowered by one stage. Regilecki does get hit for a second speed oh. drop, and the Will Wisp Leonardo was thinking Lando would switch in, so he actually does connect Will Wisp onto Clefairy two games in a row. Obviously, not mattering too much because it's that it doesn't really have an attack anyway. Uh, there will be some residual damage every turn from the burn that's going to help make it easier to knock out, say, like through a protect later on if it takes a couple of turns of burn damage maybe you'll get it you'll be able to ko it through protect but not too meaningful leonardo was thinking on our end gabby he thought landers was coming in he did and i love that switch from leonard even though the clefairy is starting out this battle at already half of its health gone just a really great read, recognizing that Spectreyer is only going to be on the field for a couple of turns, and being able to call that Will-O-Wisp switch in is of utmost importance, given how Game 1 played out for both Leonardo and Leonard. So a great prediction there from Leonard. What I'm curious about, though, is how does he pivot now into a more offensive position? Now that the Clefairy is out on the field in order to sort of protect its partner from the will o -Wisp, from the Snarls perhaps, it, it does make you wonder, like, do you take this opportunity to get Blastoise back in, or do you just send that Landorus right in again? Volt switch into Spectreer, not enough for a knockout. I don't know if it would have knocked out without the Snarl drop as well. It looks like it might have yeah. been close. I, I would lean towards it wouldn't have knocked out, even without Snarl, um, but this is a chance for Ooh. Leonard to bring the Blastoise in, protect out of Clefairy. This is the position that Leonard wanted to find himself yes. in. There's no Reggie Lucky. The, the Blastoise is able to go for an attack if it wants to here, uh, so it doesn't have a way of like boosting its speed in this, in this scenario, so you're going to really want to take advantage of Blastoise while it is around. And right now, you could pretty safely... From my memory, there's no water resist in the back on Le on Leonardo's uh, potentially there if, like, Galarian Moltres is the fourth Pokemon again. So you can pretty safely go for a water attack into that Landorus slot and do a lot of damage regardless, even if it switches out. Yep, that's absolutely correct. Landorus will switch out into Regieleki, who is a very frail Pokemon, already down to just over half of its HP. Clefairy switching out as well on Leonard's and into the lander so trying to catch leonard with an or leonardo excuse me with an intimidate not going to matter against these two special attackers the spectrier is still the fastest pokemon on the field even with the speed drops from electro web so that snarl is going to hurt blastoise because it's going to lower its special attack by one stage and ice beam from blastoise now at minus one is not enough to knock out the regieleki so that's the the difficult spot there you don't want to you don't want a gigantamax and then your minus one special attack uh but you also don't want to click hydro cannon because then you can't move the next turn so uh the the ice beam was safe expecting landers to switch in but because of snarl regieleki tanks the, the the hit yep that's correct <laughs> Reggie Oleki switching out into Moltres this time, who is weak to ice. So this one will still do some nice damage. And Leonard deciding to Dynamax the Landers at this point, which is what, uh, which has really brought him here in all the way through the Players' Cup. It's been the Pokemon he's Dynamax the most that we have seen at this point, besides the Reggie Oleki. And uh, you you wonder if a Max Quake is coming out? No, it's Max Airstream into the Spectreer slot that will knock out Spectreer. And then since Moltres didn't attack this turn, uh, it's not you know no damage, no threat onto Leonard's end. This Ice Beam will be super effective, but because of the Snarl, it's not going to do 
as much damage into the Galarian Moltres as Leonard would like. Still do a solid amount though. Will it bring it to Berserk range? No, actually not even close. Doesn't even bring it into the yellow. But it will activate weakness policy, which gets this Moltres right back up to the plus two special attack we saw it achieve in game one, thanks to the nasty plot. So on the one hand, I really like these past turns from Leonard because he has managed to maneuver the Landorus and the Blastoise so that they're next to each other. And so that those max airstreams will start benefiting the both of them. And unlike game one, Leonard was the first person to get that Dynamax up on the field. And as of right now, at least, you know, does have the speed advantage against Leonardo's Landorus and Moltres. The downside is though, that this Blastoise and this Landorus have both been weakened in their attacking stat of choice. And in a situation where an Ice Beam from that Blastoise would have probably seriously threatened the opposing Landorus and, you know, brought Moltres down to below half its health for that Berserk activation as well. Uh, now we're just seeing so much less damage on the field. So even though Leonard has the speed on his side, he's really taken a lot in order to get to this position. Yes, he still has all four of his Pokemon, but will these special attack and intimidate drops start adding up, especially as Leonardo starts going potentially for that Dynamax is to be seen. Leonardo switching in his very frail Regilecki that is one hit from being knocked out at this point, and Leonardo deciding to Dynamax as well. So he's gonna have a one turn potential advantage later on where his Dynamax will still be up when Leonard's ends on his Landorus. It will be Galarian Moltres as the Dynamax option here. Weakness policy boost, giving it that boost to its special attack and attack by two stages. So it is gonna be a pretty strong attacker. Max Airstream from Landorus is able to knock out the Regilecki through the resisted attack, getting a second speed boost on Leonard's end. So it's a very, very fast Landers here. Um, but what you have to wonder how fast the Blastoise is and at plus two speed, <laughs> it's now faster than Galarian Moltres and does yawn it. So after next turn's attack, Galarian Moltres will be put to sleep. This Max Airstream from Moltres though does knock out Blastoise. So I think Leonard understanding he's willing to trade Blastoise for the Yawn the next turn. Talk about perfect timing on that Yawn though. Leonardo is down to his last two Pokemon, which means Moltres has absolutely nothing it can do to avoid being put to sleep at the end of this turn. So a great uh, call from Leonard. I think recognizing that the odds of the Blastoise either not even just like staying on the field but really utilizing its special attacking stat advantageously in this game were uh, very slim thanks to those snarls but by going for yawn he's ensured that the landorus will have the best opportunity to take out that moltres through the weakness policy activation, through the potential berserk activation, um, and then handle the opposing Landorus in a board state where he is guaranteed to be faster. Unfortunately for Leonard, Leonardo can go for a sword stance here, just like we saw in game one. And unlike in game one, Leonard no longer has the ability to try and burn it. So maybe forced to rely on Sing, maybe forced to rely on attacks missing to get through that. But for now, Landorus, the the Dynamax version has a great opportunity to get one last Dynamax attack in. One last Max Airstream out of Leonard, and that will bring Leonardo's Landorus down to 50% of his HP. That's a plus three speed Landorus on Leonard's end, so you know can't possibly get any faster at that point. But Max Airstream out of Galarian Moltres does knock out the Clefairy. Thanks to Follow Me, that attack was potentially redirected towards the Clefairy there. Of course, you can also target Clefairy if you wanted to, but usually you go for the other slot and just assume that you're going to be uh, be follow me away and redirect it away. But the Rock Slide into Landorus does some okay damage. No Sword Stance though in that spot, just trying to get some Rock Slide chip. What I'm curious now is we're going to be in a position where the two Landorus are back to their non-Dynamax forms. 
and we're going to see these two landers face off again. I'm curious if Leonard is going to use fly on his landers this turn to try and get into the same position we saw Leonardo's landers in in previous games, especially since the Reggie Alecki, while it will not be able to outspeed that Moltres, should get the opportunity to attack it once before it wakes up. You might have to wait a turn. You know, maybe if you're worried about the opposing Landorus uh, getting an attack in, you go for protect this turn, and then you let your Landorus attack the other Landorus. Um, but like Reggie Alecki and Moltres should be able to sort of handle themselves. So I think it's really going to come down to what the two Landorus do this turn. And if we're going back to game one, it is going to come down to that speed and as of right now, it looks like Leonard's Landorus is going to be faster. So uh, just something to keep an eye on as this turn uh, is going to go play out. Yeah, especially with the max airstream boost, you can expect Leonard's Landorus to be, you know, even faster than Galarian Moltres at this point. Of course, Moltres is forced or forced to stay asleep here this turn as it was put to sleep last turn thanks to the yawn. That's one of the benefits of yawn is you're kind yeah. of... You're, you're allowing them to have an attack this turn for the benefit of your team, forcing them to be put asleep later, compared to something like Spore's Sleep Powder, which means that they can essentially wake up earlier. Uh, so this Rock Slide does connect onto both of Leonard's Pokemon, not getting a knockout on the two Landers, though, has a chance of forcing it to sleep. Of course, Moltres being, or excuse me, forcing it to flinch, but it doesn't get oh. a flinch. Rock Slide missing Reggie Olecki, That's though. Huge. Will hit the Landorus, not enough for a knockout, brings it down into the red, and then Thunderbolt from Reggie Lucky into Moltres, knocking it out. Moltres never even saw it coming because it was asleep, didn't even know it was getting hit by that super effective <laughs> Thunderbolt in this spot. And now, uh, now you have Leonard Leonardo with a very low health Landorus against the Landorus that's faster than it. So all you, I said, essentially all you gotta do is hit Rock Slide or hit Fly or whatever, and you know the Reggie Lucky can't touch <laughs> Landers either, so we're kind of in the same position game one was of Landers versus Landers. We are, but the mind games between picking Rock Slide and picking Fly seem very big. If you pick Fly, you know it's going to hit, but you also know you're going to go first, and then your opponent could fly in the turn that you try to come back, and then you end up with that whole weird interaction. Uh, Rock Slide, not the most accurate move, and while it does connect here in order to score that knockout, I couldn't imagine what would have happened if that Rock Slide had missed like it did on uh, Leonard's Reggie Alecki in that previous turn. Like, that game was so close. Had the other Rock Slide missed, or had it hit, I guess would be the better thing to say, that Reggie Alecki most likely would have been knocked out, which meant Moltres wouldn't have been knocked out, which meant that Leonard's Landorus would have had quite the job ahead of it. So, very great adaptations from both these trainers. Again, those max airstreams and how they relate to the Landorus in particular really were the key of this game. But then it also came down to just that wire, and I mean, now we're even even closer to the wire as both these trainers are one game away from moving on in this tournament and not dropping down to the losers bracket which as we all know is where your tournament life is really put on the line yeah the losers bracket is definitely the the scary position you don't want to find yourself in here in the players cup uh, i liked the adjustments on leonard's and obviously he led blastoise as somewhat of a bait as we were referring to it there switching out and trying to pivot the rest of his team around uh, knowing that the Blastoise, the yawn utility of putting things to sleep was just as important as the actual damage output that it could have had. Something that Leonardo has brought both games and led with Reggie Lucky Spectriere, that's a very fast lead, right? And the Spectriere either can go for a fast Snarl, fast Will-O-Wisp, whatever it wants to go for. So if Leonardo goes for that strategy again in game three, that would be all three games, which would lead, lead you to believe him thinking that's really his best way of dealing with this is I bring these fast Pokemon out and then I'll decide afterwards what my course of action is. I, I think that really is the best approach for both these trainers because again, these teams are so similar. You really have to play this mind game of, you know, when is my opponent going to switch? When is my opponent going to Electro Web? When are, when are they going to Dynamax? And then how do I take that information and then look at my side of the field and make it work out? We're not really talking about a game that comes down to 
this super effectively hits that or this knocks out that. It's all about speed, it's all about positioning, and it's all about when you get those key Dynamax turns in. So going into game three, maybe we'll see a couple Pokemon switch ups. I find it very surprising that a Registeel has not made an appearance yet, but maybe now's the time. Well, maybe they don't like the, the matchup of having the steel type into steel and being resisted and whatnot, but Leonardo does lead Spectrier and Reggie Lecky yet again. This time around in game three for Leonard Craft, it is Reggie Lecky Landorus there. So we saw this in game one, right? We knew Spectrier mm -hmm. was faster and Leonardo went for a Will-O-Wisp into the Clefairy switching. With yep. that new knowledge, does Leonard make the same play? I think he has one way around that if he decides he wants to, and that is Electroweb plus Y into the Spectrier. Or you can switch, or you can switch. That is also a great switch, and uh, why not switch it up to be a perfect mirror as well while you're at it? There you go, Spectrier on the oh, no. side of Leonard here, and that's a Dynamax from Leonardo, so Landers is not going to Dynamax this game, it's out, it is the Spectrier! Oh, wait, what? Wait a second, so no Willowis, no Snarl, instead we are going for max damage on turn one from Leonardo. Who's Reggie Alecki is faster. That would be Leonardo's with the Electro Web lowering the speed of both Reggie Alecki and Spectrier on Leonard's end. So now you would expect Leonardo Spectrier to be attacking second. Is this a Max Phantasm? It is Max Phantasm into the Reggie Alecki slot. So that is a knockout. That double target takes down Reggie Alecki. There is no chance for Leonard to Electro Web in this game three here. Going to lower the defense as well on Spectrier. Oh, no. uh, the the Grim Nay also out of the Spectrier. So now it's faster and it has a plus one special attack boost at this point. What an adjustment out of Leonardo. He is in such a good spot after turn one. We spent a lot of time, too, talking about the role of the Spectrier on this team. You know, providing that support with the Taunt and Will-O-Wisp and Snarl. Having safety goggles so you don't have to worry about rage powders or you know those pesky those pesky uh sleep powders that you kind of run into especially from venusaur teams the one thing that we did not touch about on spectra air is that even though people are primarily using it as a support option for their teams it's also a fantastic special attacker without much investment and if you find the opportunity like leonardo did to go for that dynamax get that max phantasm and more importantly find a knockout to start stacking up those grim nay boosts you are going to put yourself in a strong position very quickly the one thing though that leonardo has done by choosing to dynamax the spectrier is forego max airstream which right now doesn't seem as big of a deal but if leonard is able to find a way to get that landorus to go for those max airstreams to get that damage down and remove the reggie Alecki so that the electro web is no longer a viable form of speed control you know i think that leonard can still win this but the spectrier is such a huge threat right now he needs to immediately answer it and what better way to do that than with a dynamax Absolutely. That is Landorus. Leonard's tried and true in this entire tournament run at this point, dynamaxing it yet again for game three. His his winner's side life is on the line here. You get knocked down to the losers. That's not a position you want to be in. But Reggie Lecky Volt Switch into the Clefairy will do an okay amount of damage. And now Leonard is going to have to uh, switch into something else. I wonder what the Spectrier's option is, as Landorus is the switch in here to get an Intimidate off onto Leonard's end. Does the Spectrier want a Max Phantasm into the Clefairy slot? Does it want to go for the and it, uh, targeting down the Dynamax Landers there? And he does choose Landers. That is a special attack boost in Max Phantasm and it does not do too much damage there. I was kind of expecting it to do more in that spot because of the Grim Nay boost it got on the previous turn. But Landers is still relatively healthy and Max Airstream into Spectrier thanks to the Intimidate from Leonardo is now ensuring that that Max Airstream is not a two hit KO onto Dynamax, uh, excuse me, Spectrier. 
the one thing that I am curious about moving forwards in this turn is how much the Max Phantasms are going to make a difference. Not so much with the Spectrier because, you know, it's dealing special damage, but with the Landorus on Leonardo's side of the field. We've seen this Clefairy take two defense drops from these Max, or one defense drop from this Max Phantasm, and it's already taken so much damage otherwise in this battle. You have to wonder if that means Landorus is going to be able to knock it out with something as simple as a fly or that rock slide we saw on it. Spectator should also get the opportunity to get one more Max Phantasm in as well prior to that Landorus attack. So these defense drops are gonna be a huge thing to keep an eye on. Helping Hand Max Airstream negates the Intimidate because of Helping Hand boosting the power of that Max Airstream. So not only are you going to boost the speed yet again on his end, but you also knock out Spectre here before it can get its third Dynamax attack off in this matchup here. So that was a huge Helping Hand from the best friend out there in Clefairy, who's <laughs> always protecting his teammates and boosting them up. The fly out of Leonardo will take two turns to uh, to target, but of course he wasn't targeted this turn anyway, so he wasn't gonna take damage. That was a nice helping hand that was actually really pivotal. It was because that was the thing that stopped the Max Phantasm from dropping Clefairy and Landorus's defense by one further stage. Now Leonard's in a position where he could pretty safely go for a follow me plus an attack into the opposing Regieleki and bring things down to Leonardo's last two Pokemon. I think you have to be careful about your own Pokemon on the field. You know, maybe try and find an opportunity to pivot in that uh, Spectre Air of your own once just to drop the defense or drop the Intimidate. Uh, but still, great positioning from Leonard. Max Quake on this third and final turn of Dynamax into Reggie Lucky will take it down there. So this, or excuse me, bring it down to its focus stash, I should say. So it's gonna hang on with one HP. This has been a very effective three turns of, uh, of Dynamax out of Landorus in this matchup. And that's exactly what Leonard needed to try to come back in this game. Thunderbolt going into Clefairy since the Regilicky cannot target Landorus at all. And Fly lets Landorus live on 12 HP, just barely hanging oh. on. <laughs> Sing missing two, which is very unfortunate for Leonard there. Well, that was a real back and forth turn. There's a lot of Pokemon here that are, are very low in, in this matchup. <laughs> There are, but the Clefairy is still around long enough to go for one last follow me and really force Leonardo, I think, to rely on Rock Slide this turn or uh, set up for another fly, which, you know, Leonard can play around. Fly is a very predictable move because you do have to take that first turn of invulnerability to leave so that you can come crashing down. So. It's very close, and I feel like Leonard still has the advantage if only because he has the Pokemon advantage. But if Leonardo can find a way to knock out these two Pokemon simultaneously and connect that rock slide, that is going to be really important. A Swords Dance at 6 HP from Leonard. So you better hope this rock oh, slide no! misses. No, it missed Clefairy, but not <laughs> Landorus. So Landorus bringing... Uh, bringing its Swords Dance with it to the Poke Center to get healed up after this one, not getting any attack off with it. Uh, Clefairy's Aww. still hanging out, and now you're going to have the Spectre Air come in as Leonard's last Pokemon here. That was, wow, that was a, <laughs> you're essentially relying on 10% of the time. That was yep. your win condition if Rock Slide missed. Yep, and that, and the reason why Leonard went for the sword stance there was I don't think he had enough firepower, so to speak, in order to find the knockout on the Landorus without it. So you, it's a very tough play to have to make. And unfortunately, I mean, you got one dodge, but you really wanted the Landorus to miss that one. Yeah, <laughs> Electro Web connecting onto both of Leonard's Pokemon, lowering their speeds that's obviously gonna affect the Spectre Era more than Clefairy, or Clefairy protecting actually, so not getting hit by, and Rock Slide yet again into Spectre Air, not knocking out, not doing as much damage as I would expect with the Life Orb, but Snarl takes out Regilecki, Landorus is still over 50% of its HP at this point. Uh, so now thanks to that, that Electro Web, you're gonna have Landorus be faster than 
the the Spectre every turn. Chilling May boost though does help out a little bit on Leonard's and giving him special attack boost. Yeah, with Leonardo's last Pokemon being that Galarian Moltres, though, I think that this game is going to end in his favor. I really like how Clefairy has been spending these turns alternating between the Follow Me and the Sing. I think getting that Landorus to go to sleep ended up being a key part of his endgame. Unfortunately for Leonard, though, those Sings just did not find their mark this time around, and instead, Leonardo will be moving on in the winner's bracket of this tournament a double ko with earthquake on that last turn there so congratulations